Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section 5.6, where we extend our discussion of enthalpy and the changes of enthalpy in the context of Hess's law. Now, let's do a little recap of what we know about state functions. As a state function, the change in enthalpy only depends on a few things. It only depends on the amount of matter we have that undergoes this change and the initial state of our reactants and the final state of our products. A change in enthalpy will be the same for a reaction that is carried out in multiple steps or in just one step. So if I, you know, had this reaction, I carried, I wanted to get to one end goal. If I started at one place and did, you know, three reactions to get to that end goal, the change, the total change in enthalpy will be the same as if I just, you know, did one reaction to get to that end goal. That's what this is saying. Hess's law states that if a reaction is carry out, carried out excuse me, in a series of steps, the change in enthalpy for the overall reaction equals the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. This goes along with the concept that state functions are independent of the path by which the reaction is carried out. And here's an example. Earlier in this chapter, we talked about the combustion of methane gas. And we looked at this example here. This is one step of methane gas reacting in one mole of methane gas, excuse me, reacting with two moles of oxygen to produce one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of liquid water. The change in enthalpy is negative 890 kilojoules. This is a reaction in one step. This is the ultimate change in enthalpy. And let's just say, for some reason, this wouldn't be as likely, but let's just say, for some reason, I did this in two steps. Instead of going to liquid water, my two-step process, I went to gaseous water, and then from gas to liquid. So that's one step, going to liquid water. Here, I'm going to gas, and then to liquid water. I could use the individual changes in enthalpy for these two steps to find the overall change in enthalpy for the reaction. So delta H for this first reaction, car carbon dioxide, methane gas reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide in two moles of water vapor. The change in enthalpy for that one is negative 802 kilojoules. So it took more energy to get to the gas phase in the chemical reaction, thus less energy is released with the overall change in heat. If I have this one here, this reaction, we have two moles of water, water vapor, excuse me, then going to two moles of liquid water. This is an exothermic process, this is condensation. So I'm going to have to release 88 kilojoules of heat. If I add up this reaction's enthalpy and this, act, this reaction's enthalpy, I get the total enthalpy that's equivalent to the enthalpy that's up there for the entire equation. Now, if I add up these two, you can think of maybe you know, half enthalpy reactions, the multi-step reactions. If I add these two up, I have water vapor, two moles of water vapor on this side, my reactants. But up here, I have two moles of water vapor in my product side. With those two contrasting each other in the product and the reactant side, they're kind of like canceling out. So you kind of think of that one and that one canceling out. So if we were to add these two up, they would cancel each other out, giving you this. CH4, so gaseous ammonia, reacting with two moles of O2, producing one mole of carbon dioxide, and two moles of liquid water. This is your net equation, which we can obviously see matches the one from our one-step equation, or one-step example up there. So this is Hess's law, using the change in enthalpies for multiple steps to represent the overall change in enthalpy of a particular reaction. So next class, we'll do some practice with this and talk about how we can incorporate this into a larger context or into a different context. Take notes, gentlemen.